So what is concordance and discordance? This is one of the metrics that is specific to uh, the binary classification, the logistic regression, we'll be using it to evaluate the model performance. So what is uh, concordance? Concordance, just one of the measures to see the goodness of fit of logistic regression, regression model. So with this concordance and discordance alone, we cannot decide, you know, how, you know, uh, my model is doing good or my model is doing bad, okay? The concordant pairs and discordant pairs, it refers to comparing two pairs of data. We are going to compare the two pairs of data. So what do you mean by comparing the two pairs of data? For example, look here. This is my target. Target is nothing but my dependent variable, okay? And, uh, you know, this is the value for this one. Okay, so the, let's say customer ID one, you know, 10 different customer IDs are there or 10 different customers. First customer, you know, is not going to churn the probability 0 0.056. And here, uh, you know, my model, uh, okay, let's say, you know, this customer is one, it assigned one here and the probability is 0 0.200. Okay, here, all you need to do is, when you look at this here, so we have a pair. What is what do you mean by pair? The churners and non-churners. This is one pair, right? Likewise, how many number of pairs we can create it? So in this case, tell me how many number of non-churners are there? How many number of churners are there? Zero is non-churners, one is churner. How many of them are churners? How many of them are non-churners? Can you all type it in the chat room so that I can make sure that I'm able to hold your attention? Can you all please make it fast so that we will finish this session quickly? I don't know, seven non-churners, very good. Are, uh, okay, and uh, how many of them are churners? Three, right? Three are churners. And out of the 10, Palani, are you there? So three, the zero is non-churner, one is churner. How many? Churners, all of you, please. Okay, yeah, three, seven uh, non-churners, uh, Mukilan, correct, right? So three churners, very good. So we have uh, three records, four, uh, seven, and eight have the target value as one, churners. And then remaining seven records have target value zero. So hence, we can create seven cross three, three uh, churners and seven non-churners. Hence, we can create three cross seven, pairs, which is nothing but 21 pairs of one and zero. So what we do is um, we will take, um, you know, one pair here. So what I will do is I will take, um, yeah, so we can create three kinds. So look here, in this case, I take um, the ID four, the record four. So here, um, if you see here, four, look here, three records, right? Four, seven, and eight are churners. So I take uh, four here, right? So here, uh, three churners and uh, seven, two, four, six, seven, right? Each one, you can create seven. Four comma one, churner and non -churner, pairs. Four comma two, four comma three, four comma five, four comma six, four comma seven, right? For each value, seven, seven, right? Four comma one. Similarly, 7, 1, 7, 2, 7, 3, 7, 4, something like that, okay? So, 3 sevens, 21 pairs. 21 pairs of 1 and 0, okay? Here we can see that 1, right? So, 4, 1, 4, 2, and uh, 4, 3, we can see that. And the probabilities, let's say, you know, you got the probabilities for this pair is, you know, uh, 4, right? So for this one, 0 0.200. And for the 1, Right, one is it assigned the 0 0.0, 0 0.056. For one, the probability 0 0.05, and four, the probability 0 0.200. For each, um, and the, in, the, in this pair, right, uh, for each pair, and each value, uh, you need to check the, you need to assign, you need to put the corresponding probabilities. And if you see here, in this pair, the probability of one is more than that of uh, zero, that is called your concordant. Okay. And the second one is same thing. So here uh, the, so this is concordant because the, in this pair, 
the probability of one, this is probability of zero, this is probability of one. The probability of one is more than the probability of zero. Hence, it is called concordant. Okay. Basically, we are comparing the pairs with their respective probabilities. And here also it is concordant. Now you would tell me what is this one? 0 0.20, 0 0.20. For the probability one, right? Uh, the sorry, the um, the churner, the churner, the probability has been assigned 0.2. Non-churner, it assigned 0.2. Okay, so in this case, it's called tied pair. So we will end up this kind of situation. Sometimes what will happen? You remember, uh, I showed you in the notebook, Jupyter notebook. Right? They, they, when you use the predict proba, it gives you uh, two values, predict proba. One is uh, the first value is for non-churner. What is the probability? The customer is not going to churn. And what is the probability the customer is going to churn? Right? For zero, it gives the probability. One is gives the probability. If you get uh, same probability for both, so kind of that is what you are tied pair. This is your tied pair. Now you tell me, see what kind of pair is this? Since this probability is less than this one, not greater than this one, hence it is not concordant. It is not same, hence it is not tied pair. Since the value is, uh, you know, uh, this value is less than this value, we call this a discordant pair, discordant. Okay, discordance. Very good, Mukila. Same thing. Okay, if this probability is uh, you know more than this one, hence this is a concordant. And again, here also con concordant, concordant. We have one discordant. We have another. You know, this is the one is called your thing. So the next step is um, right. Um, see the simple thing. If the probability assigned to one is higher than the probability assigned to zero in a pair, right? Then that pair is said to be concordant. So if you end up something like this, okay, if the probability assigned to one is lower than the probability assigned to zero, this is called your discordant. It is not agreeing with that. Okay. So here, um, out of uh, 21 pairs, right? So you are, uh, so in, in this case, uh, seven pairs, right? So how much you are getting it? How many concordants are there? Uh, three, four, five. Okay, five. We are getting five. So total number of pairs. I just, you know, this is the formula here to find out the thing here. Okay, one second. Let's see, what is the total number of pairs? 21. The denominator, you put 21 here. And um, let's say the out of 21 pairs, 18 are concordant, 18 are concordant, and two are discordant. And let's say, you know, this is the one. See, here we have tried with only, uh, you know, one, one pair, three, record number four, right? So similarly, if you try it for other, let's say your concordant is 18 and discordant is two, and one is tied pair. Okay. And in this case, uh, how many concordants are 18? 18 divided by total number of pairs is 21. So this one gives us close to 80 percentage. So if you say that your classifier classifies concordance is uh, 80 or above, then it is good. The model was able to uh, uh, you know, uh, distinguish the one with zero. Right, it, it is able to, uh, you know, classify, uh, you know, the good with good and you know the bad with bad. Okay, correctly, it's eighty percent. Your model, your classifier is good because your concordance value is high. If it is less than uh, eighty, this is 50, sixty or fifty, you know, then there is no agreement. Okay, then your model is not doing good job. Okay, but with this itself, we cannot conclude that my model is doing good. In addition to this metric you need to check uh, the AUC and um, accuracy all the things you need to use you need to check it out so hope you understood uh, how you need to use this one and the next one is uh, we have something called kappa statistic even I don't remember uh, which uh, how do we get this value kappa statistic uh, let me just check I need to do googling here uh, 